Welcome to the Create What You Speak podcast. Join me as we have a real life discussion on how to change your life by changing your thoughts. Remember, question everything, trust yourself, and find your truth. Welcome to the Create What You Speak podcast. My name is Sloan Fremont and I'm your host. This week, I have a really fun and exciting interview. Uh, we're going to be talking about tuning into the unconscious mind with the Synchronicity Oracle. Uh, my guest is the creator of the Synchronicity Oracle. His name is Eitan Ilfeld, and we're going to talk about synchronicity, how it shows up in our lives, what that means, and how you can use the Oracle really to, to tune in and understand those unconscious parts of ourselves that really want out and want to be hurt. So I really hope you enjoy this interview. Uh, we actually do a live reading in this interview, which is so fun. Uh, I had a really great time with this. So hope you enjoy it too. This week, I want to welcome Eitan Ilfeld to the Create What You Speak podcast. And we're going to be talking about tuning into the unconscious mind with the synchronicity oral. Oracle, sorry. Eitan is the creator of the Synchronicity Oracle deck, and we're going to have a conversation about what synchronicity means, um, how to really tap into our unconscious mind, what that actually means. And so if you've ever worked with Oracle decks, if you have an interest in this, or even if you haven't, I think you're really going to enjoy this conversation um, because Eitan's deck is so different. It's um, based on synchronicity and it's, it's, I've worked with it in, um, well, we'll get into it because it's really amazing what this deck um, can do. So a little bit about Eitan before we get into it here. He is the author of Duchamp versus Einstein and Beyond Contemporary Art, also the creator of the Synchronicity Oracle, as I mentioned. He holds a physics degree from Stanford University, is a U.S. chess master, and the owner of Watkins Books, London's oldest mind, body, and spirit bookshop. He's, he also hosts the, the Eitan Ilfeld podcast. So Eitan, I'm so glad to have you this week. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sloan. It's such a pleasure to be here. Yes. So I like to do a little icebreaker at the beginning just to have a little fun when we get started. So my question for you this week is, if you had a time machine, would you go back in time or would you go into the future? <laughs> wow. <clears throat> That's a good question. Um, a great question. As a physicist, I mean, I'm very interested in time. And, 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 and curiously, you know, it's worth pointing out that um, according to current technology, it's not that hard to go into the future, actually. So that's something that uh, that actually is an option. Um, there are several ways to do that. Potentially, uh, cryogenic freezing is one way to do it. And, right. uh, and that technology is improving. I'm sure we'll, we'll be able to do that quite easily in the future. And also, when you, if you were to travel in, in a spacecraft uh, that goes very quickly, or even if you be on, on, on Earth, if you start to, to move closer to the speed of light, then due to special relativity, time moves faster for the people around you. So that when you come back, less time would have moved than it would for other people. So actually, we have the technology to go forward in time, basically. So that's something that isn't as special as going back in time, in a sense. So maybe I'd want to take advantage of going back in time just because that's more unique. I mean, <laughs> physics, physics talks about the idea of going back in time, but we, we don't really know if that's possible uh, just to kind of get really geeky, I'll mention that uh, there is a, a particle, uh, a theoretical particle called a, a tachyon, which uh, is quite interesting because Einstein's uh, law about the speed of light, it's a, very, it's a very hard law. And you can't really, you can't go, you can't pass the speed of light, right? But there isn't anything in the, in the equations that actually doesn't say, that, that says you can't always go faster than speed of light. So if you had a particle that's faster than the speed of light, it could potentially be okay. And a tachyon is that particle that never slows down be, under the speed of light and supposedly is able to travel through time because once you, you're able to go faster than the speed of light, you can do time travel. But time travel is uh, into the past is hard. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to opt for the, uh, the, I think the more unique of the two, and I would try and go into the past. Go into the past. Yeah. And that's so, physics is so interesting to me, just talking about time and the speed of light and travel and, you know, just wrapping on that, you know, is so um, it's, it's, it's crazy to me. It's one of those things that I've never quite. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where I, I, I don't know which one I would do. I think there's um, we, always, I feel like sometimes we fear the future, you know, so that, so wanting to go into the future, know that everything's going to be okay or know that get the answers to whatever we're looking for. Right. But then there's also that other side where it's like, 
going back and fixing things that you wish you would have done differently. But then both of those things open up a whole door of other, you know, chain reactions of things. So I think, um, you know, being in our space right at this moment is, um, it's also very interesting as well, because you have that potential for who knows, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And yes, the present is, is a present. Uh, uh, and we, we get to create our own, uh, our own futures. So, That's right. Yeah. Create our own reality. Exactly. So, okay. So I know I read your bio, but I always like to ask my guests in your words, who is Eitan Ilfeld? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, I mean, I think we're all, all of us uh, are different people in different scenarios. I, um, I have several, several interests uh, that, uh, that range from the sciences uh, to uh, competitive chess. So I, that's, that's yeah. very analytical and uh, you know, very left left brain, but I, I also really enjoy uh, books and and culture and art and uh, and creativity and and my mom, who's an astrologer, has always uh, cultivated this sort of uh, curiosity for I guess what's what's beyond the knowable. Let's let's, let's yeah. put it that way. And yeah. uh, so I appreciate I guess both aspects. And and I guess I, I would just say that I'm. Uh, I'm a lifelong student because I'm always trying to, to learn more. I mean, that's, uh, that's what the, the journey is about for me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And there's always something, you know, we think we quote know something and then there's also uh, always another layer, another level or another uh, something catch it. Like I've had this happen where something will catch my attention and be like, wait a minute, I thought I knew this topic. And then I learn a whole nother, you know, area Absolutely. that I didn't know existed. Exactly. So, let's, let's talk about the synchronistic synchronistic, why can I say that word, synchronicity oracle that you developed. Um, I want to show, here's the booklet of, the, I was watching the video. And then also I want to show really quick before we start talking about this, the actual, the shape of the cards, which is so, so unique for anybody who's worked with the oracle deck before. Um, you've probably not seen this more, um, this, this shape here. And so look about the deck and, and tell us a little bit about, um, maybe we'll start with what does synchronicity mean? And then also, what is an Oracle deck? If somebody isn't familiar with that, start there. Sure. <clears throat> two, two great uh, questions. Um, an Oracle is anything you can use to try and uh, either divine the future or get more in touch with, with yourself. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just about divination, but basically it's trying to use some sort of mechanism to get in touch with yourself through, through a sign. And I mean, obviously there's, you know, the Oracle of Delphi is very famous uh, in history, uh, for giving, you know, giving guidance or, you know, there are people you could go to that would, that would be oracles. And, um, and then there are also like various techniques. I mean, the, the I Ching is one of the oldest, uh, which is also known as the Chinese book of changes where they, the, the Chinese would throw coins and there was a way to interpret these coins into uh, these hexagrams, which would then give you some sort of guidance, something to meditate upon. So, and they also use sticks. I mean, there's all, there's so many ways to, to do it. In terms of um, the the West, I would say that the tarot deck is the is the most well known oracle, and of course there are, there are a gazillion different types of uh, of tarots with lots of different themes. Uh, they all pretty much have seventy eight cards, so they're they're similar in essence, but you know the styles are different, and the Rider weight is probably the the most popular. Uh, but uh, but actually, you know, it's quite interesting. Uh, uh, anything can be an oracle, right? Like you, you could take uh, just a random book and just flip through its pages and you know see where your your finger lands and see if that gives you some sort of insight. And that yeah, get, the, get a message, yeah, yeah, exactly. And and that brings us back to this idea of of synchronicity. So as a word, I guess physicists thought about it a little bit uh, already in the 19th century, but it wasn't really a, a word that was used in popular culture. Or, or certainly not in the way that we think of it today until Carl Jung uh, coined the term. And he wrote uh, a really interesting essay about synchronicity where he, he, he was very interested in the idea that there would be these various events that could happen at the same time or, or somehow linked, maybe not even the same time, or, but they had some sort of link, even though they weren't caused by the same thing. And, and, and he thought, well, that, that's interesting. Maybe, uh, first of all, from a more, I guess, paranormal perspective you could say well that's a sign and that's the universe speaking to me or also if you wanted to be more of I guess like a skeptic you could still say well that's kind of interesting uh, what does that trigger in me what is that uh, um, you know, what insight can that give me into my subconscious and you know Jung was very interested obviously in all these various archetypes that we've got he was also interested in, in the 
the collective unconscious idea that we have. You know, we have a sort of collective uh, framework that works for everyone and, and also the creative unconscious. So I think uh, a lot of us have different, different parts of us that we're, we're not attuned to. And, and there are various ways to, to do that. And I think that uh, oracles are very interesting technique for trying to get in touch with uh, with your creative unconscious or whatever you want to call it unconscious subconscious mind yeah and it's such a like synchronicity because you can you can look at it and think of it all these different ways you can choose to see it as nothing also right you can Mm -hmm. choose to just see events happening and but there's that to me it always felt like a click or like a like a shimmering something when I have a synchronistic event, like where two things happen and it makes me stop. And there's a moment where I'm like, wait a minute. And I, it, it catches me and I feel, you know, whatever the, the synchronicity was. And so that, and then we look at the Oracle, right. Using myself, using tarot cards over the years and getting familiar with that and understanding what it meant and also what it didn't mean, right. Not taking, mm. Um, you know, things in, uh, you know, maybe out of like desperation or out of wanting to see something that isn't there kind of thing, you know? And so this, having the Oracle, having, you know, synchronistic events in our lives, there's, what's interesting to me also is that our unconscious mind, we don't, there's a disconnect there in some way that we can't register that or understand that in our everyday thinking. So can you talk a little bit about that? Why that happens or why, why can't we just look at an event or look at something and say, um, you know, this is, this is what I, I'm, what I'm not able to express um, in words quite yet, but I can understand it now um, as I reading the Oracle kind of thing. What, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. I mean, <clears throat> so synchronicities, I mean, as you're saying, they're, they're, you, you decide how you want to how you want to take them. I mean, my my mom has always celebrated them and and loved. Uh, yeah. We had a culture in the house of of sharing synchronicities, and um, and uh, yeah, she found them very very interesting and insightful. So, um, but uh, but yeah, certainly you know whether you're you're a skeptic or you're someone who believes in 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 a higher power, uh, you know, sending a message, it's it's a very powerful thing. And and, and the thing is that. You, know, you asked about how to get in touch with, uh, I guess, our, our our subconscious or unconscious. It's very, you know, we we were, I think, I mean, again, I, I studied physics, not psychology, so I have a limited understanding, I guess, of some of some of these ideas. But uh, uh, from what I understand, in terms of like uh, Jungian psychology, there's there's this belief that the ego tends to dominate, and, uh, and that goes to yeah. back to Freud as well. And and it's very hard sometimes to to tap into these other parts of us uh, and uh, and there are various ways to kind of bring them to the surface. I mean, Julia, Julia Cameron, who wrote uh, The Artist's Way, for mm-hmm. example, uh, who I have tremendous uh, respect for, she recommends doing morning pages, which is yes. a sort of uh, yes. stream of consciousness writing as soon as you wake up. And, and one of the reasons for that, she says, is uh, because in Jungian psychology, they believe that when you wake up, you're your ego isn't fully formed until the first 45 minutes. So you're in a bit of a discombobulated like sense of self. And, and that's when you can actually kind of tap into yourself. So that's a very good moment. Obviously, you know, you can meditate, you can do a lot of other things to try and tap in, but it's not always that easy to access, uh, you know, our deeper selves. And, and I think it, it's both fascinating. And I think it's also a worthwhile pursuit. Yes, I agree. And I've done morning pages as well. And I find that's a way um, that's the, that first, you know, 30, 45 minutes of the morning. That's what I use to set my intention for the day, or it really sets my tone for the day if I choose to. And it, it is a lot of times a choice. Like I I'm being intentional with it because it's very easy just to get up and be like, uh, it's not worth yeah. it, you know, but it is worth it. And what you were saying about the ego, having that, you know, blocker, almost like a wall up or something that, that is the front even though it's not the truth, often it's that front that doesn't let us get into those deeper areas or really get to the, the it's, it's a surf, like, have you ever had what you might call surface friends, like your friends on the surface, but you don't tell them the deep, dark, dark sure, secrets of sure. your life, right? That's kind of what I envision as the ego, right? It's that front or yeah, I'm smiling and I'm happy, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not mm. revealing my, my true beliefs to you. And so once we can get past that, and, and, and even using, um, like with using your deck and, and questions I asked when I was um, working with this, 
there's that sense of knowing or that relief when you get that message, because it's like, I already knew it anyway. I just couldn't formulate it into the words totally. yet. Yeah. And I feel it in my body. You know, I can feel a release in my body of like, oh, finally, I'll, I get to um, allow myself to entertain that answer. You know, yeah, it's I mean, kind I mean, of- it's, Absolutely. Even when you, you could even be with a coin flip where, you know, you're, you're feeling really indecisive and then you flip right. that coin and you're like, oh, I, I didn't, I wish it wasn't that. And that's when you're right. like, well, you know what? Don't follow the coin, follow your gut. Yeah, that's your answer. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So um, how did you come up with the idea for the synchronicity oracle? Because this is so different. And maybe we can explain it to the to the listeners, um, how your deck works with the different images and kind of how you came up with all that. Sure. Yeah. And also happy uh, if you're if you want to be a guinea pig to, to do a reading yes. as well. I do um, want to do a reading. Yes. Sure. My pleasure. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of great systems out there and um and but I wanted to to create a system that was very accessible. So tarot, obviously, it's great, but you know the major arcana. There are a lot of images there that are easier to, to interpret. But even that's not necessarily that easy. And, and certainly, you'd have to be you know very uh, uh, erudite to know the difference between let's say like you know the five of cups and the six of cups, right? Right. Um, so I just wanted really kind of simple images that could uh, be interpreted without a guidebook. If you want, I still wrote a guidebook for every symbol. And uh, so I, I curated 57 symbols that uh, drew on various uh, cultures and, and periods from antiquity to modernity. And, uh, and I wanted it, yeah, to be just basically ready to, to play with immediately. And the idea of synchronicity was to use, there's, there's a children's game that uses a similar mechanism to, where you have two cards and any two cards you pick from a deck will always have one and only one matching symbol. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's a very, very nice mechanism. And, and the idea of the hexagon, which, uh, which you mentioned, is kind of novel, but basically the idea was you can use hexagons to, uh, to build with, we, or we can say, in, or scientifically we tell tessellate, to cover a surface is to call it to tessellate. And so hexagons are really quite cool objects. And, and, and so these are, these are melt, meant to be played with and built with in, in my classic spread, which gives a, a, a sort of past, present, future, and then an intuition uh, symbol in the middle uses the uh the framework of the hexagon so they're quite it's quite a it's quite a fun fun thing so uh, it is yeah. and can you flip over and show the other side with the symbols or just give those watching the video they can see there's various symbols there in different different places on on the back of the cards and what i find so interesting with this when i worked with this every single time there was a one-to-one -one match and that that is so um it's it's so I don't know how else to say it it's like because I was kind of for a little bit trying to not get a match and see if it would <laughs> not match and every single time it matched was one, yes, unless, you know, one unless, unless unless we made a mistake so yeah we, we tried hard yeah, no, it, sure that we yeah. would. every so single time it matched and I find that so um so interesting but also it's so straight like you were saying right some of the other you know in with tarot let's say in the Rider weight deck and looking at it like you're saying maybe you get like the five of cups, six of cups, and I don't know, three of wands or something. And you're, you know, it's, yes, you can interpret, but it, it, I never felt confident in that, I guess. And, and mm. with your deck, I felt like it was very easy. There was no, um, I didn't feel like I had to study it for 10 years to, to understand how to interpret, you know, my couple of questions that I had, right. It was very straightforward. Which, yeah, exactly. And, and that, that was the point. And even, you know, the card that I just picked, for example, Every, so every card, had, there are 57 cards with eight symbols each, and they happen, each symbol appears eight times, like an eight other cards, is like an eight cards total. And yeah, I mean, so this card, for example, has the god Pan, who's a trickster, and also the, uh, the root of the word panic, by the way, uh, which comes back from apparently he would wake up in the field and often roar when he was woken up and cause the, uh, the sheep to stampede. That's where the word panic comes from, oh. apparently. But um, you've got the Tree of Life from Kabbalah on this card. You've got uh, these chakra lovers, uh, which are a bit mm -hmm. hard to see, these lovers that, that have the chakras. You've got an infinity symbol, a bullseye, a moon, glasses, uh, mushroom clouds. So all, these, all these symbols are, are pretty easy to, to basically play with. And uh, yeah, and that was, that was really fun. It was quite hard to to choose, you know, the precise 57 symbols. That was, that was the real challenge, I have to say. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Cause there's so many, so many different ways to, to think about it. And, um, and so do you want to do a reading real quick? Yeah. Yeah. And also, also I'll say another interesting thing you can do, which is kind of cool. And you don't really have that with, with other, uh, 
I guess like card systems, let's say, is you can also find a synchronicity between two people. So you can pick a card, I can pick a, par- a card and we can oh, see what yeah. symbol comes out, oh, which is like a nice icebreaker. So we can just do that for a second. Yeah, yeah, let's so do that. Tell me, yeah. tell me when to stop. Do you want me to use my deck that I have and I'll pick one and then you- Yeah, oh wow, I one. see. Uh, okay, that will be challenging, but interesting. Sure, why not? We'll okay. see what we- so I'm gonna pick one and you pick one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the only problem is that we better not pick the same card. <laughs> <laughs> would that be unlikely? No, that would be interesting if we did. That would be a heck of a synchronicity. So that would be cool as well. Okay, cool. I've got a card. Okay, so do I. Well, we both will both put ours on the camera. And we'll see if we can find the matching symbol. You know, and I, fa- I, find them, I found it. Can you see the matching symbol? It's a little tricky. No. Okay, it is... The prism. Uh, so you've got a rainbow sort yeah, of yeah, light going there. through a prism, and yeah, and, and that is yes. that is a cool symbol. I think that's a cool synchronicity for us because we both, uh, I think we both like to spread light. I mean, that's a big part of I think you and and our our existence is about sharing sharing wisdom and and you know spreading light out to people. Yeah, so I oh think gosh, that's actually that. quite nice. Yeah, that mm-hmm. is. I really love that. That's I haven't seen that symbol yet. So that's amazing. I love that. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. Again, it goes back to physics. Uh, the prism can take white light and, you know, turn into a rainbow. And Newton in 1666, he actually was, he did a reverse experiment where he used two prisms. He took the rainbow and brought it back into white light. So oh you can God. actually even reverse engineer. Right. He even did that. He was very, very clever, Newton, I yeah. have to say. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful symbol. And it's also about transformation, right? Because uh, uh, you know, the prism is actually changing the light. Yeah, so, uh, it is. And the book that you have that comes with the deck has um, just some definitions that people can refer to. And um, but really, I think it is your intent was to let people decide for them what that means. Is that right? That, that total, you've got a guide. Total. So here's I'll show the those watching the video. There's a a couple of paragraphs and then there's a med- there's a meditation at the end which um but then the, the it's really open for interpretation absolutely and you don't you don't need to refer to the guidebook if you use the the classic spread that that, uh, that i designed which you know you don't have to but i think it's a it's a nice way to do a reading then i i do recommend uh uh reading everything and taking the reflection and meditation for uh paying attention to that for the intuition symbol that comes out uh, yeah. so i think that's very important but you could use it for any stage or, or not use it at all so yeah i think uh that that's 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 the idea there's you know the meditations i think are quite fun uh mm-hmm. and very easy and quick to do but by all means like you one one doesn't have to use them it's it's uh it's it's meant to be playful and uh and up to the user yeah and you know i was when i first got the deck and i was going through and asking some questions and um i asked a question about because at that time I wasn't putting videos out yet for the podcast. And so I was, I was nervous about that because I'd done the show for several years and I would always wanted to make it about the show and not about me personally. And so that's why I never did video. Cause I, that's, that was back then that was my decision, but then I was becoming more, I just wanted to put video out. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to be able to um, do interviews and, and do this. And so I asked a question around, um, you know, something, it wasn't a yes, no question. It was something around, being successful in that, or, you know, something of that nature. And the card, the symbol that I got was the unicycle juggler. And what I loved about at the end of this, and I still think about this when I kind of have a moment where I'm, you know, if I get a, I don't know if I'm having a bad day and I feel like, should I put a video out, you know, and at the end in the, on the description, it talks about in the meditation and imagining yourself walking a tightrope as part of a circus performance and you're up high. And after taking a few steps, you slip and fall. The audience grasps, gasps in fear, but you land gracefully. And the last sentence, you have successfully entertained everyone and knew that you were safe all along. I absolutely love that, that, cause that, that spoke to me about the videos and feeling like, um, my, and I don't know what I felt what happened if I put videos out, right? It's not like it's, it's just one of those mental, the ego, you know, and blocking what I really want to do. But I love that about knowing that I was safe all along that really in that moment that like, that was so meaningful to me. So that was a really amazing experience using the deck. Wow. Thank you. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. And, and I think it's great that, you know, you, that you're making videos and, and combining various pieces of content and actually trying to maximize ways to share the wisdom that you're generating. So I I think that's, that's amazing. So I I say more power to you. 
Well, and it goes back to the, the prism, like we talked about, right. Shining that light, right. And, and continuing to do that, even in the state of fear, right. Cause I was feeling very fearful in my situation, but I, I didn't let the fear take over. Right. I decided to yeah. move forward anyway, because my desire to spread that light or spread um, more positive messages was greater than the fear at that point. Absolutely. And yeah, fear, I mean, fear is, is a powerful thing. It's a tough thing, but obviously if we can approach it sometimes from, from the idea of uh, excitement, right? Because actually excitement yeah. and fear can often feel very similar. Then, uh, you know, we, we take a very different point of view. And, and the juggler, you know, on, on the unicycle is trying to do so much, but they're, they're also able to do it. And, you know, and sometimes we do need to juggle in life and, and yeah. be bold, right? Uh, uh, obviously, if you're trying to juggle too many balls, they, <laughs> they will start falling. But, uh, right. but the idea of uh, trying to push yourself is, uh, you know, and in the right way, that's, that's a good thing, but it's about balance as well. Right? Yeah, ba- that balance. And um, can you talk a bit about, so with using your deck and, and asking questions, maybe in the right way, because it's, it's very, um, I know when I first started using Oracle decks, I want a yes, no, like, I, I want to mm-hmm. know, is it going to mm-hmm. be okay? I want to know, am I going to have the relationship <laughs> I want? I, you know, whatever that is. So it was yeah. like, yes, no questions. But you talk a little bit about in the, in the guide about asking um, maybe better phrased questions. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. I mean, that's, that's a very interesting thing. I think, I mean, obviously you can ask a single question, and, you know, much like you did and, and take out, find one symbol. You just need to draw two cards and one symbol will emerge. And, you know, and there in, during that process of discovering the symbol, it takes you a while to kind of process that, that might also bring some, some epiphany. And I think the idea is that through the interaction, by being open uh, to the experience, you're able to gain so much more. If you decide that you're gonna to be totally, I guess, just have this tunnel vision of just yes and no, then you know, you're, you're, you're closing yourself from, from the insights that the world can give you. Um, obviously, yes, I mean, uh, you know, it's nice and can be, there's a relief to some extent to having that yes, no certainty, but um, I don't think that's what life is all about, actually. Um, and, uh, and I think that, uh, you know, if, well, even if you're, even if you're a, a cynic and a skeptic and just wants to look at the world from purely scientific framework, you still have to acknowledge the fact that uh, the future, according to contemporary physics, quantum mechanics is uncertain that we are creating it. So yeah. the idea yeah. of something that is completely determined in a way, uh, is also, uh, it, you know, is a bit silly. Like what you hear so far? Take what you've learned and invest in yourself with the Create What You Speak Academy. Visit createwhatyouspeak.com to learn more. Now back to the show. It's yes. very uh, limiting, right? Yeah. Because it doesn't allow for synchronicities to show up or it doesn't allow for um, you, how you might change, like maybe in a moment, I'm feeling very emotional about something. So I'm, I'm bringing a lot of energy or fear when I'm asking about the deck or to the deck, right. Or whatever I'm asking, but then maybe, you know, four hours later, I'm in a completely different state and I could come and I'm not bringing that fear and that energy. So I've always felt like um, yes, no, or this is how it's going to be was, was way too limiting and not um, just not how it's, there's better way, there's better ways to use, to ask questions. And and like you were even talking about at the beginning about being a lifelong student and, and learning and, and um, there's always more to learn. Right. And, And so, you know, with the asking questions, maybe asking something like how let's take a job, for example, if somebody's interested in wants a new job, you know, instead of asking, will I get the job, whatever job is, you know, maybe a better question is something like, what can I do to get the job that's right for me? Or what can I do to prepare for this job interview, you know, that kind of stuff. And that is very expansive, because there's so many options, so many, you know, opportunities. And, but will I get the job? Yes or no? Well, you can, that, that, that doesn't, that's too um, rigid, I feel like. And it's not only is it too rigid, but also, you know, the whole idea of uh, also like, should I do this or not? Yes. Right? Should I also, um, is too, it, it's too rigid also in that, that type of question abdicates responsibility. Right. And I think that, uh, you know, we have to own our decisions, right? Yes. Like even when yes. we consult an Oracle, you know, the idea is there, it's supposed to help you see inside yourself. Uh, that might sound corny, but I, I do believe that it's not, it isn't for, for someone else 
uh, or something else to tell you what you need yes. to do. You need to find a way to use these tools to empower yourself. And, uh, you know, just like I think, you know, there are a lot of great gurus out there, but in the end of the day, you know, the greatest guru is inside you. That's who you need to tap into. And you can, you can gain wisdom from spiritual teachers, which is, you know, which is wonderful, but you should never abdicate responsibility for your own decisions. That is when you're no longer, you no longer have agency. I 100% agree with you. I and, that, and, that, and that is actually, you know, when you do that, that's when people are going to the sort of like victim mentality, right? Like, uh, right. and of course, you know, we can be victims. We all are at certain points, but you know, you don't, if you, if you bring yourself into that mindset, like you, you're going to, that will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. But right? yes. if you, if you own, you know, what you do and uh, yeah, then, yeah, then, then you do it, you do it your way, whether right. or not it always, it may not always go the way you want, but you know, but you're, you, you gotta be true to yourself. I agree with that hundred percent. And that I, I actually did a show a while back. It might've been last year called um, the era of the guru is over because I felt for that, that exact thing where we, and I've done this, I, will fully admit that I've done this where I've looked to other people for the answers or I put other people mm. on pedestals or put other people uh, well I have to do it that way because that person you know did it but when we which isn't true and I you know we've all <laughs> come a long way I think over the past couple of years to seeing a lot of these things um yeah. like the veil came off but um back to the yes no question just one more point on that when we when we put those decisions on someone else an oracle deck let's say or another person or whatever then it um doing that it, it almost it, it it's like then people and because i've done this so i'm i use say my include myself in this but it's like we sit back and then we do nothing right we just wait for the yes to sh- show up in our lap right. right so we don't follow the synchronicity we don't l- go inside of ourselves and, and try to um you know find out what we really want or what's true for us right we sit back and, and we wait and in waiting we miss opportunities or we you know all these this this um you know i have a a framed picture downstairs in my living room that says in this moment, there is infinite possibility. And I love to be reminded of that. And I, when we are putting our faith in someone else or expecting someone else or expecting anything outside of ourselves, like you're saying, when we, when we abdicate to someone else, we are not allowing for possibility. And, um, I think that that, that is an amazing reminder to, to, to remember that, right. We, we're in charge, but we get to use tools and we can use them as we want yep. to. And as any way that helps us gain insight and to see us, but ultimately we are our, we are our own guru, like you said. Absolutely. Because, you know, there are a lot of, you know, good gurus out there, but they're just human beings as well. Right. You can't forget that. Yeah, exactly. Like us. Totally. Totally. Um, is there anything else you want the listeners to know about the synchronicity Oracle? Um, I think that's mostly it. I mean, if you if you want, I can do a quick demo for you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how quick it is. It'll still take a little bit of time, but it'll, it'll, be, it'll be a pleasure to actually. Yeah, let's do that. Do yes. That will work better, obviously, on video. But uh, yeah, we can we can show show how it plays. So yes, and for anybody that's listening and not, I have the video links in the show notes. So if you get a chance, come back and watch the the video, and um, you'll be able to see the deck in action. <laughs> Cool. Awesome. So, okay. So here we go. So I'll let you tell me when to stop and, and I'll get a card. Okay. Oh yeah. Yes. This one. Yes. Okay. Do that. Sorry. I'll let you see the cards while I do it. So as though okay. you're here, there we go. Tell me when to stop. That one. Okay. Cool. So I can hold these two cards out. Let's see, can you see the synchronicity? The um, purple um, yes, ohm symbol. Or, I'm not that's sure. That's right. That's right. That's the, the ohm symbol in, inside a lotus flower. Um, so this is kind of energetically where you're coming from, supposedly at the moment. Uh, what does it mean to you? Um, the first word that comes to mind is life. Um, like that, uh, with that lotus around it, like the expanding into multiple yeah if the listeners can see the the purple around it there it, to me it's like the the layers kind of opening up um and being able to grow i mean i think you know the the lotus flower in addition to being you know a very uh interesting spiritual symbol in various uh, cultures it also represents uh, overcoming obstacles yeah because, and transcending it's it's a beautiful flower that you know, comes out of uh, a very muddy and kind of like 
I guess, not as aesthetic environment. Right. Uh, to, and it does, it does transcend. And I, and I, Ohm is very interesting because, you know, we're, we're right now talking on your podcast and you're a creator and you deal with words and, you know, Ohm is supposedly the first word, right? That's like yeah. the, 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 the word that has generated the universe, I guess. Uh, yeah. So I, I find that like, you know, that, that, that seems to fly. I mean, and we're just doing a generic reading for you in terms of where you're coming from, where you are, where you're going uh, right now, but that, that, that all sounds really, really cool. Um, any, I don't know, any other insights you might get uh, from, from that? Um, that Ohm symbol also reminds me, I did yoga for many years, 20 plus years. And so it reminds oh. me of being at different yoga retreats and even chanting or having that more um, like internal going within, um, which makes sense like in where I'm at right now, because that's kind of actually how I've been feeling is a lot of, and I actually wrote it in my, my intentions for the day was to kind of like step back and go within a little more when I need to and not feeling like I have to be doing things that I don't want to be doing. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah. I think, I think that's key. And uh, I'm just looking at the meditation here. It actually, it it is encouraging you to try and go and chant actually. Yeah. Interesting. um, Yeah. uh, And, uh, and that, you know, chanting has shown that uh, research on chanting has shown that it can actually help heal the body uh, Mm -hmm. similar to the way that a cat can pair. When cats pair, they actually heal their body as well. Oh yeah, yeah. So oh, wow. it's uh, oh, interesting. Uh, very, very, very powerful. So let's see, let's see, and where where you're at. So tell me, tell me when when to stop. And I'll pick a card. Stop that one. Cool. And that one. Cool. It's actually nice if for the listeners. I guess you can still hear the cards being shuffled. Yeah. Uh, so. Let's see. We've got two cards. We've got to find the synchronicity. Yep. Oh, I see. The lovers I like one. Yeah. Is that what go. it is? It is. These are two, these are conjugal lovers with the chakras. It's a little bit hard to see. But yeah, there we go. Come close. You can see the actual chakras. That's, I that's see. Yes. At. What does that mean to you? To me, it means calling in a new relationship. Cool. Is that, um, are you, is that what you're doing at present? Yes. Yes, I am. And so that, that, um, that symbol of like the right relationship though, like balanced, like the chakras are balanced on there, like a balanced and right relationship. That's what that's saying to me. Absolutely. This is, this is, this is a a symbol where it, uh, you can see, you can see the balance, you can the chakras symmetrically by one another. And it, and it is, it's very much about balance also with the feminine and the masculine, um, and uh, that's very interesting. This is also why I think that these readings are very interesting because you also, you know, both you get to talk about things and, and also the, the, uh, the person who's doing the reading gets to learn also about you. So that's interesting. And, and they, can, yeah. they can say, well, look, this is very interesting because it's, it's, it is a period for you to call in, you know, new things and it's a good time for that. But also to remember to think about balance and, 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 yeah. and also to, to think about what is it exactly that you want to bring in, right? It's often... When you can visualize what you want, you have a better chance of bringing it in, right? Yes. And that that is a very key thing. Otherwise, we're kind of lost and we happen to stumble upon something, right? But that that's not always the best way to, exactly. to create a future. Exactly. Um, no, I love that. I love that um, that reminder of the balance and the not being haphazard, being intentional. That's what it, I think what it kind of speaks to me, being intentional about the next person I bring into my life. And may, they should probably also be able to appreciate some of these, you know, because you have a lot of amazing, uh, uh, you know, knowledge and skills and uh, they should be able to appreciate that as well. Yeah. Uh, yes, they should. <laughs> yes. Thanks for 100%. that reminder. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it should not be something for them to think, oh, this is just something wacky that they would right, be an interesting right. person. No, no. Right. They should appreciate you. Obviously, look, we're all different. We can have people compliment us. We don't have to, we don't need to find a mirror image of ourselves, but it is nice to be able to appreciate yeah, to have that and to have that um i think what you were saying about being intentional is, is really key because um that is not something i i, I don't want to say it's not something i've done before but um my intentions are different now and i'm very much more clear on what those are and uh yeah i think that's uh that's exciting <laughs> that's awesome yeah it is really exciting um and it's also a very creative period as well it means to also to create both uh, you know in in many ways so that, that's that's very cool well, let's see let's see where where you're where you're headed energetically okay. all right uh stop cool okay stop okay there we go 
So we've got quite an interesting range of symbols. Um, let's see here. But what is matching? The... Uh, we finally, I'm always, you know, I always have this little bit of nervousness that we finally <laughs> found that mistake, you know? It hasn't happened yet. Oh, the moon, yet, I see it, the moon, yes. <laughs> that's right, so that's cool. You're headed towards the moon. What, and this is a crescent moon. Well, what does that mean to you? Um, really like cool, my first actually. thought is like night or darkness. Almost like uh, the crescent moon being like shining light into the darkness. Yeah. You know, starting that little sliver of, but then it will grow to, to be, you know, to be fully shining. Um, I think that's what, that's what that's saying to me. I like that. Um, you know, the moon also represents uh, silver, uh, I believe. Uh, uh, and uh and as you say it reflects light it also you know it also represents the the feminine and uh, because unlike the sun that creates the light like it's actually reflecting back the light from the sun so it's also about also being in touch with your feminine self as well um and um and i i, I think it's very interesting i mean it, this is where i might actually go and open the book and see if i can find yeah. some interesting uh insight so what i do is i go to the table of contents and it's got for every image it's got a page so it's very easy and then just go to i'll go to the moon so quick to find and indeed the keywords are reflection silver nighttime passivity and, and feminine and also for every image i should say i actually uh there are a lot of interesting keywords but i'll always make sure that there's a shadow word as well because i think every image has positive things but also a shadow and it's important to also you know acknowledge that um yeah. so i think that's really interesting um and I'm um, you know, just to make it a bit quicker, I'll say, I'll read some stuff. In Hinduism, Lord Shiva is often shown wearing a crescent moon on his head, symbolizing that he is ma the master of time. In alchemy, it represents silver. It was also the emblem for the Roman goddess Diana, the Greek equivalent of Artemis, and known as Inanna or Ishtar in ancient Mesopotamia, signifying virginity. Esoteric traditions have attributed a feminine energy to the moon that counters the masculine energy of the sun, Okay, well, we'll skip ahead. And, and here the reflection is the moon rises and sets much quicker than the sun, completing its lunar cycle in less than a month. Do you identify more with the sun or the moon? Does that identification fluctuate throughout the day? Do you usually mirror the energy and emotions of people around you? That's, that's a question. Or are you that is a good your question. Own? Yes. Because uh, I think that's very interesting as well when, you, when we interact with people. How, how, what does that bring out of us? Obviously, to some extent, we all mirror a little bit, but who, who is it that, you know, brings more of us out or who is it you know when do we want to speak more when do we become more kind of i guess introverted um yeah. and there's a there's a nice meditation here uh that involves a river but we'll we'll we'll, we'll leave that we'll read the meditation for for the final intuition symbol that's going to be exciting we'll see how that works so okay. you now you now have have gotten a, a you know a reading for the past present and future uh as as they are energetically at the moment and then we take all of those six cards i'll just show in the video if it can kind of work yeah there we go and we form a circle and there's room for one last card and and that that card will help us find hopefully uh, an intuitive uh, symbol to guide you in, in the in, in the the near future the coming oh, i love weeks. that yeah so i'm going to let you pick the one final card and okay. then we'll see if we can actually on zoom it's not that easy but hopefully we can <laughs> <laughs> analyze the the constellation of cards okay um stop okay is it this one the, this, uh, yes yeah sorry this or it could be it could be anything it could be the bottom the top whatever you want now the one before that actually on the bottom okay good see that's great that you you what you wanted I've, I've, I've chosen i've taken that for you for your choice and i'm putting it in the middle and that's great and now let's see. I'm gonna to have to do this. Would be interesting to see how we can do this. And but so, for those listening, what um, Eitan has done is he's put the hexagon cards in a circle, and they they connect to each other based on their shape. And then the last card goes in the middle of all of that. That's right. So now, now we're going to look at the middle card. We'll we'll find the link with its neighbors. So, for example, between this card and this card, the link is. Uh, the, these kissing lovers you can kind of see that i think oh yeah that's interesting which is goes back to your chakra lovers before right um and then between here and here 
the link is the the uh, the, le- the number pi. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know, can you see the link between these two here? The star. That's right, the pentagram, and here. Um, the alien. Very good. Yep, that's right. Uh, and then here. That one we have the, the clown. Okay. I can't see the upper of the card, so okay. Gotcha. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Okay. And then uh and then and then here. The glasses. Here, the glasses. So this is actually very interesting. It's quite it's very, very rare. Usually we will have a symbol appear more than once, and that will become a dominant symbol. Sometimes you'll have more than one symbol appear more than once. You could have two dominant symbols. You have the perfect balance. So you've actually got in six different symbols. Um, and that's, that's quite cool and interesting. I, I write in the book that um, it's up to you then to kind of interpret that. Either it means that you need to find your own intuition or you can go for a symbol that you find interesting in there. But I think all those symbols are very interesting to think about. So the glasses are about trying to see more clearly. Right. Um, the, the clown is about identity. And sometimes we mask ourselves as well and performing. We often entertain, but what about, yeah. you know, how do we show our, you know, is it, do we want to hide our in ourselves or not? Um, the alien is about being an outsider sometimes, right? That's, that's an interesting thing. So I think all those symbols, what I would do is I would take, I like to take all of those six and see if there's some insight there. Um, and then the pentagram, you know, that's obviously, uh, it, it can go back to like uh, the four or the five elements is different uh, and, and, you know, in the order of the universe as well. Um, and the lovers goes back to what you're thinking about. I mean, I think that's also, again, about harmony, right? Because uh, it's, right. it's, it's, it's about balance. And, and pi, pi is about balance, it's about circles. It's about, you know, opening and closing circles as well. That's what ah, the, the number pi is all about. Um, that's what, what it was created for. So, I don't know. Is there a specific symbol from all those that I don't know that you, you you're more most drawn to right now? Because this is again a unique situation. We can we can read a meditation yeah, for one well, of them. Well, immediately I go to the lovers one because, like I said, that was. But then also the glasses, like being able to see clearly, and the the clown and the alien of, uh, you know, the identity or being um, feeling yeah. the outsider. Um, you know, all of these almost tell a story in a way right it's um to me well, totally well, let's let's let, i mean let's let's go back for a second and remember what was the story that we got so far so you started with the the ohm lotus you're coming from right. the word and 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 you know overcoming obstacles and this transformation and then you got to the chakra lovers which is about finding balance and and, and i would say it's also for creative phase as well it's creativity too uh but also balancing the masculine and the feminine and trying to visualize and and create that harmony in the future. And then uh, do you remember what you got uh, going forward? What was the, the sign? The, um, what was it? The, uh, the moon. Oh yeah, the moon. Yes. Yeah. So, so your narrative, it starts from, you know, the word that creates anything, almost kind of like Genesis, right? Almost the, the beginning yeah. to, to then procreation uh, or, or also finding also, a partner to, and that could be like, you know, literally, figuratively, all these different ways creating, and then, and then to reflecting light, that's moving towards back, moving towards reflecting light. And now, in terms of the, the symbols, I mean, I, I like that you're drawn to it's four symbols in particular, the, certainly the, the clown and the alien are very similar in certain ways, because they're, they're both about identity. And, yeah. um, and, and then obviously, glasses about seeing more clearly and the lovers about balance. Let's, uh, well, let's pick, let's pick one of them for a meditation. Do you want to choose one from those four? Let's do the glasses. To see cool. Clearly. I like that. Um, by the way, random synchronicity. Um, I, I don't wear glasses, but I've decided to go and, and get uh, my eyes tested. Cause I, you know, I do that once in a blue moon. And yeah. so I literally today, right before uh, I, I called to make uh, an appointment at optometrist to get my eyes tested. So I will be <laughs> doing that next week. Oh, but, wow. uh, interesting synchronicity. <laughs> uh, but yeah, glasses. So vision, a transparency perspective, but the shadow is blindness, right? Mm. Um, and ooh, the reflection, by the way, to kind of go down to its final sentence, it says, 
when you view something, you're always interacting with it in some way. And that interaction has the ability to change both you and the viewed object. So that's interesting. And this, this is something, by the way, going back to physics, it's true. The observer yeah. always changes the, yes. uh, the experiment. You cannot observe something you know, completely, completely without influence it. It's impossible. So that's, that's actually a very important thing because you know, in old uh, science, people thought that was possible, but it isn't possible. Um, and the meditation is, imagine seeing a fog of light in front of you, which makes everything ahead unclear. You take a deep breath and put on corrective glasses. All of a sudden, the fog disappears, and you are now able to see a rainbow of magnificent colors. Know that the rainbow was always there all along. You just needed the right tools to see it. And I think, by the way, that's what synchronicity is all about. <laughs> so, um, so that's cool. Uh, I don't know. That do you is, find, is that interesting? Does that, does that, uh, do you find that useful? It totally is because it also goes back to the juggler about how um, I was always safe when I yeah. asked that question. And then the glasses seen clearly. Um, one way I always described when, like, when something clicks with me or I have, I read some concept like like I'm feeling right now with what we're talking about it always reminded me of being at the eye doctor and when they click the things down mm. and you can see clearly you know and that's what that oh. reminds me of is that that clarity of drawing out those feelings and emotions that are swirling around inside but don't have words formed to them yet and being able to process that but also um it was always there. You just needed to see it like that. That gives me chills. Like that's um, I think that's so cool. I love it. Also, I yeah, it was a, it's a fun reading. I I enjoyed doing it. And yeah, you know, I'll, I'll show just again the whole layout, but it's quite a quite a cool thing. Yeah, uh, it is the spread, the way the, the cards interact with each other and connect is so um, it's so amazing. Eitan, I've been really enjoyed having you on the show. Um, congratulations on the deck. It, it's so amazing. Can you tell the listeners where they can find out more about you and purchase their own deck? Sure. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's available in, in a lot of places. A lot, a lot of bookshops uh, have it and it can also be purchased online. Uh, so there's, there's a myriad of places to buy it from. And, uh, and if, if anyone's interested in listening to my podcast, uh, just Google uh, Eitan Ilfeld podcast. It's uh, on Spotify and also on on, uh, on Apple podcasts. And uh, yeah, and I have to say, it's, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you. And uh, uh, I have no doubt that you will uh, will find what you seek because you, you're doing it all the time. I mean, that's that's what you are. And you you know, like me, you're you're a student. And 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 you know, I I, I hope that you can keep creating lots of light. For as many people as possible because I, I think what you're doing is wonderful so thank you thank really. you and you as well again congratulations on the deck and it's um it's uh it's amazing I'm smiling like for those who aren't watching the video I have the biggest smile on my face because I feel like this was so it was so fun but so interesting and also again like we talked about at the beginning um one of those a tool that you can use for life you can use to guide your life and it's uh it's amazing so Eitan again thank you so much for joining us this week thank you Sloan it was, it was a, a real pleasure Yes. And also I'll link to, um, your, uh, to where people can find you in the show notes. Sure. Sure. Great. All Thanks right. so much. Thank you. What an absolutely fun and amazing interview that was with Aton. I, uh, I loved the live reading that that was so fun. It, it being able to tune in like that, that's a real life example of that, right? Being able to use symbols to go within to, to when you're presented with that. And like I was on the spot, right? We didn't, plan these out with the cards or anything ahead of time. But when, when I was going through that, when he was showing the cards and asking me what it meant to me, you know, I was going with the first thing that came to mind, the first, that gut feeling that whatever my intuition or my subconscious was trying to tell me. And I went with that. And it's so interesting that it paints a story that when you start to bring those things to life, you can put some pieces together, pieces of the puzzle, right? Being able to, to do that. And that's so fun to me. It's, um, I just absolutely love that. I love doing that reading, that reading live. And, you know, we got into a lot of different things today, talking about synchronicity, if you choose to believe in it or not, right? Because you have the option not to, um, that's, that's totally fine too. But when we started talking about never ab advocating your own responsibility, right? That, that's such a great reminder to, uh, to all of us that, it's not the Oracle telling us how our life's going to go. It's not a guru telling us how our lives are going to go. Right. It's up to us. We get to decide that we pick, we pick end of story, really end of story. We pick. And so 
there are tools that we can use along the way to tune in and um, break through barriers or get through those blocks. And, and that's why I wanted to bring Aton onto the show this week to be able to just give another example of that. But ultimately, it all is in our control, right? It rests in our hands and we get to be the, the one that decides. So I hope you enjoyed this interview with Aton. Um, I certainly did. It was so much fun. And uh, thank you again for listening this week on the Create What You Speak podcast. You can find out more about me at my website, sloanfremont.com. And if you want to get notified every time there's a new podcast episode, just click on the right-hand side on the website and you'll find that. Also remember, I have my Create What You Speak Academy. This is where you can take what I talk about in the podcast one step further in your life. And my newest course is called the BS Method, the Better Stories Method, how to tell a better story in five minutes or less. And yes, you can do that. I give you all the tools to do that. I give you um, different ways to think about things, different scripts, different um, different things that you can use to start telling yourself a different story. Because we all know when we change our story, we change our life. So Uh, That's it for this week. Be sure to tune in next week where I will continue to bring you real life examples on how to continue to live free in what feels like an unfree world. 